Okay. All right, everybody. Uh, it is 7.31 and we are now open for this uh, February 22nd meeting of Governance Organization and Legislation Committee. Um, I keep getting slightly distracted because my partner's downstairs watching Star Wars and every once in a while the music gets really loud and, and it comes through my headphones. Um, I, I keep turning you up because I'm like, what's happening? Okay. Um, anyway, it's Attack of the Clones. It's the worst one. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and take attendance and call the roll to make sure that we can hear and be heard. Uh, let's start with Lynn Griesmeyer. Present. Pat DeAngelis. Present. George Ryan. Present. And Councillor Ette is absent today. He informed me ahead of time. Um, and I am Anna and I am present. And Athena, can you hear us? And we can hear you. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So I am seeing no attendees. Um, and so we're going to move through public comment pretty quickly, it looks like tonight. Um, and the first item on our agenda is the approval of the, oh my gosh, now my doc stopped loading, um, approval of the 2024 uh, Tibetan National Uprising Day Proclamation. As a reminder, we are voting this clear, consistent, and actionable. We are not voting the content. Lynn, you said you did have a version of this available to George. I do. You comment? I do. Just two seconds and I will pull it up. Take your time. Um, George yeah, unmuted. Is... And so I'm assuming he's very eager to. I know I have it. And I, I did pull it up earlier and it is a word version and uh, Tibet right there. Okay. Um, so. Here we go. Uh, the other name to be added, by the way, is Pam Rooney. Okay. Thank you. The My name in red was one of the edits that I made. So the other ones are probably there as well. Oh, okay. Yes, I think you will see that. Yeah, I did it in the one in the packet by accident. I apologize. I really didn't. But I, you'll see it's mostly... It's not changing anything except making a correction in one where there was some things omitted. Mm -hmm. yep, so Pat, right. if you can highlight those, I was gonna say, oh, okay, they are in red. Okay, yeah. you can see them. Oh, that's fine. Okay. All right, let's start up at the top here. Um, and I'm gonna read this through and stop me after each uh, pair. Lynn, could you scroll back up to the top? We'll go through. Um, I'm not gonna read this through exactly. I'm gonna ask, does anyone have any corrections on the first paragraph, the first whereas on March 10th? Seeing none, moving to the second whereas, the annexation and ongoing, oops. Sorry. No, you're okay. No. There we go, uh, thank you. Third whereas on December 19. Okay. I forgot what number four, I'm gonna stop counting them. Next whereas, December 27th. Okay, next, whereas the local community. Next, whereas in recognition of. Okay, whereas as many as 1 million. Whereas over 1 million. Okay, page two, whereas the president, whereas the Chinese invasion of Tibet, all right, I know we have some on the next one. Uh, whereas, Pat, do you wanna just talk us through, you made a couple- Yeah, it originally said China radical. illegally occupied Tibet over 65 years. And I thought it sounded better to say China mm -hmm. has because it's still doing it illegally um, occupied Tibet right. for over 65 years and refused, which mm -hmm. was in the original proclamation. Great, thank you. Any concerns with Pat's edits here? No, no. Those, no, those are the ones I saw, yeah. Great, thank you. All right, next one, Pat, you wanna walk us through the- Yeah, and this one, I didn't, this, what I've added is to take stronger multilateral, that was in the proclamation and it was accidentally um, left off. It ended right. with urges- um, Yes, there was a gap. Governments or something, and yeah. So anyway, there was section. that section was missing. 
So all I did was add it. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And uh, that's, all right. That's anything and that's I the can. end of Pat's. Okay. Um, next one, where is the town of Amherst? My only question is, don't we capitalize T in that town of Amherst? Yeah. We do. Which, one, which it is there oh, uh, right, yeah. right there. Oh, I, I got one. That. I rarely, I rarely get them. That's exciting <laughs> to me. Okay. But, uh, George usually catches that. I missed it. I missed it. <laughs> I'm not 100% um, from that anyway. So. Yeah, you oh, sound like I'm so sorry, cold. George. I do. I do. But I'm here. Yeah. I'm. We're very <laughs> glad you are here. Um, <laughs> my question on the my only other question I had was on do, 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 in the second to last whereas or sorry in the in the first now therefore there we go. Um, is Tibet Day capitalized? Is that intentional? Yeah. I, Tibet I don't National remember. Day. Uprising to is day, capitalized. Yeah. Yes, that is capitalized. Yes. Yeah. No, sorry, not that part. And then it's oh, continue to it's in yeah, caps. that part. Tibet Day is, uh, is that supposed to be in all caps? I'm I'm okay if it is. I just wanted to make sure it was intentional. This, the sponsors have reviewed this. Um, yeah, I don't know why they did it, but they did it. So yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. I, That's I I, it doesn't. It. Yeah. Yeah, I don't have a problem with it. I just wanted to make sure. Yeah, Lynn, sure you're one of the sponsors, so if you <laughs> Well, no, I meant the actual <laughs> Tibetan sponsors, the right. community yeah. sponsors. Community right. sponsors, right. Right. yeah. Right. Right. That may be their way of emphasizing yep. that it's a special day. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. it's fine. Okay. So. Um, my only other thing, sorry, sorry. Uh, this is a, a consistency thing. We swap back and forth in this last paragraph using first and last names and using just last names. And I think if okay. we want to be picky about it, we should just stick with, I think just stick with last names um, or go one or the other. But I, I think we we swap back and forth. That is correct. That, that makes, that's correct. So, you can choose uh, which one. Which one do you want? Why don't you just delete, let's just delete Edward and Elizabeth and keep it as yeah, last Elizabeth. names. Elizabeth, you know? yeah. Yeah, okay. and I think that's those fine. are the only ones that you got. Fine. Okay. You have something against names starting with E, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> My mom's name is Elizabeth, and this you know. is. I think I'm that one can stay. I yeah, think, spell, no, I think we can stay there, because it's. Yeah. No, I think the spelling's correct, but I would keep Good. that full name because yeah, that one. Um, you start yeah. with the name versus yeah. Right. right. Okay. Um, so, without any further edits, I move to declare the. 2024 Tibetan National Uprising Day proclamation clear, consistent, and actionable. Do I have a second? Second. All right, wait, I got to write this down because Athena's not here, and so I want to make sure I got it. Um, okay. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and call the vote. Councilor Ryan? Aye. Uh, Councilor DeAngelis? Aye. Councilor Griesmer? Aye. And I am an aye. So it, it is uh, four in favor. None opposed, one absent. Actually, I just wrote 12 absent. That would be bad. Okay. Um, thank you all, Lynn. Thank you very much for doing the yeah. um, screen share for us. Appreciate it. All right. Okay. I'm done with that one. Excellent. All right. Next up. Um, whoa. In your packets, uh, I one, I want to apologize. There was a lateness of things getting in the packets. I typically do my GOL work on Fridays right after the meeting before. Um, and this week it took a, a nosedive and I was doing it on Tuesday and Wednesday. So apologies for the lateness of some of the things that were in the packet. However, I think that we can review them just in case folks didn't have time to read them, which would be very understandable. So um, we're going to move on to the 2024 Counselor Liaison Recommendations. And what was in your packet was the list compiled um, of committees who had indicated that they would like a liaison, as well as committees who indicated they did not, or committees who did not answer, or it was not applicable for. Um, thank you. So what our role is today is to approve a list to send to the council, um, or to vote a list to send to the council, uh, and then this is really more, in, my understanding is that this is really more informational um, counselors can opt to serve as a liaison for any committee they choose, whether or not that committee wants a liaison. Um, and a, a committee wanting a liaison does not guarantee them a liaison. This basically is informational for counselors to say, we, you know, these are the folks who are seeking liaisons. 
there are 15 committees seeking liaisons. I can pretty much guarantee they will not all get one. So our job is to uh, kind of create a list to say to the council, these are the ones we think we should prioritize really. Pat, question? Yeah, one of the things in the rules of procedure, um, it lays out what the role of a liaison is. And that's yeah. it's been true since the council started. And it, I believe it may have come from the select board, Lynn, is that true? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm, I can't raise my hand because I'm, I can't okay. figure out how to raise my hand and show spot. <laughs> so let and me just okay. tell you how this list came about, okay? Well, can I finish what I was going to say? Or yes, you're talking about this list right now, or no? But I, I'm actually talking about the process by which we actually shared what liaisons do. Oh, okay, go ahead. So okay. I, I'd like to, yeah, okay, go ahead, Lynn. I, I have a plan for it, but um, I'm happy to hear. Um, so Lynn, go ahead. Uh, after our last meeting, um, I was at uh, where we agreed that. As president, I would contact each of the committees of the town, um, except, well, I'll give the exceptions. And in the process, I would explain and make sure they understood the role of liaison. And I both put it in the email and I put it in, attached it so that they were very well aware of what the role was. Um, and then I asked them to get back to me by the 15th. And then I did some follow-up. And this is the result of what happened. The counts, mm -hmm. the committees I did not ask for were elementary school building committee and Jones Library because they already have counselors on them. And mm -hmm. the others, as you can see what Anna has done here, is she starred the ones that have had liaisons in the past. And we had an overwhelming interest in this and then some others that declined. So that's... So they were made aware whether they really understand it is another issue. I'm and I think what Pat, Pat you're talking about going in the other direction. Yeah, with that awareness. Yeah. Yeah, so because go ahead I'm and not, make your comment. I'm I'm glad the committees understand. The problem is that counselors don't mm -hmm. follow the rules, and that's been particularly true on a couple of the committees, um, and and that's something that we really need to talk about because. You know, um, Alicia may want to become the uh, liaison for Community Safety and Social Justice Committee. That that would I find it uh, problematic because I think uh, I don't think she could stay outside. And we have that happening with Pam Rooney on planning board. All right, I don't think we need to give specifics for for what necessarily has transpired in. in I'm sorry, what? Years. I don't know that we need to go into specific examples of okay. specific counselors. Okay, but, but I, I think I'm that very your point concerned is that that's you. happening and it and it's unfair to every other counselor because it gives somebody who's not following the guidelines an advantage uh, that other counselors have because they're engaging Thank you. in discussion with the committee. Thank you. Um, I'm going to make a quick comment, which is to to share that when I send this final list that GOL decides back to the council, my plan was to include a memo that outlines the role of a liaison. And I think that will be mentioned when we do the liaison decision process at the council as well. Um, ultimately, counselors are bound by the rules of procedure. And if we can't follow a rule of procedure, we need to figure out what we're going to do about that. Right. So um, I think that there's, we as GOL can adapt the rules of procedure if we see fit, but um, I think what all we can do with this particular list right now, and, and because we aren't talking right. about the rules of procedure and that wasn't on the agenda, we're not necessarily getting there, but when I send this in, I will include a uh, information about what the role of a liaison is, and I will repeat that at the council meeting Great. before Thank we you. present that. Um, I think sh other than that, I think this is a, I believe in interpersonal thing where folks, if they see it happening, need to reach out to another counselor and say, hey, just a reminder. Um, I, that would be my recommendation. That, that. Was, has been tried. <laughs> I understand. Lynn? Yeah, my other recommendation is to strongly urge counselors who are very interested in a topic to the point that they would like to, from time to time, make public comment at those meetings that they really consider not being a liaison mm -hmm. to that committee. Okay, I will include that. All right, 
Okay, so any other thoughts on that? I will, so just to confirm in the memo when I send this to Lynn, I will include the role of the liaison as well as a reminder for counselors if they have a, a burning passion or interest in a specific area that being the liaison may not be what they wanna do, but they ultimately they can decide. Okay, so looking at this list, um, my recommendation is that we also, as we consider which ones we want to emphasize, that we also consider um, where the priorities of the council, the, the goals that we set for the town manager, if we're looking for a way to narrow it down. Um, that was my thought in terms of organizing this list a little bit. Um, and I have my, my, my ideas based on that. But if other folks would like to propose a different strategy, I'm, I'm open to it. Okay. So based on this list, which committees do you feel are, let's kind of just, let me start, think about where to start this. We don't have a number we need to get to. Um, we can recommend all of these right now and be done, or we can really kind of go through and, and pick out a select number. Um, so I think starting with the priorities felt wise to me. Lynn? Uh, Anna, thank you. I, I think that is a really good filter. I also think another filter is what to what extent does the business of this committee come before the council? Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. there's some of these that I, boy, I'd love to give everybody a lazy. And, and by the way, we did have one per, one committee come back and say, oh, we would like so-and-so from our committee to be a liaison to the council. And so they didn't kind of understand what we meant. So, um, but those I think would be an added filter. That's fair. Okay, let's just run down the list here and kind of do a quick sort of straw poll of um, if folks believe that this committee should continue to be prioritized for liaison or not. I'm going to make a, a list off to the side of the ones we want to keep. Okay. Um, okay, Lynn, I've, I, I can also do that on my end if you if you'd like. It's. Uh, do you have the word version? I have it pulled up. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. Then I don't have to. Do um, that. George? Can I suggest just a thought that maybe we use a, a simple numerical one, two, three, so top priority, mm -hmm. middle priority, low priority. Um, would that help? That's a great idea. Just, well, we could also just up yep. or down. So I, I, either one could work, but there might be some where we might have sort of mixed views. So um, maybe would that make sense to people? Sort of one would be top priority, two would be middling, mm -hmm. three would be lowest priority. I think that's a really good idea, George. Thank you. Um, okay. It was either that or bracket style elimination. So I think that's uh -huh. a that's a good call. Um, all right. So let's start down. So everyone is clear. One is top priority. Two is middle. Three is lower priority. Not does not mean that they are not important and that their work is not valued. <laughs> right. I want to be really clear. Lower, all lower these committees priority. do incredible work. Uh, lower liaison priority. Okay. So Amherst Affordable Housing Trust Fund Board of Trustees, I'm gonna go ahead and just call quickly. Right. Uh, give me a one, through. two, or three. Right. George? Uh, I one. said George. One. Pat? One. Uh, Lynn? Two. One. All right, and I am also a one, okay. Public Art Commission. Uh, I'm not gonna switch up the order, sorry y'all. Uh, George? Uh, I would say three. Okay, Pat? Three. Lynn? I'm going to say two, but later would like to explain why. Huh? Okay. Um, I'm going to say two generally, but I'm curious for Lynn's reasons. Board of Health, uh, George? Uh, I'd say, I don't know. Um, I guess one. Okay. <laughs> so uh, 1.5. <laughs> Sorry, one. No, you already made it a one through three know, to give I us know. a middle. Um, one. <laughs> All right. Uh, Pat? Yeah, no, I go with a one on that. Okay, Lynn? A one, and again, I have a reason for one. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I'm a two on that one. Council on Aging, uh, George? I'm going to say one. Okay. okay, Pat? I'm going to say one also. Okay, Lynn? One. Mm -hmm. I am also a one there. Okay. Ah, oh, my old stomping grounds. Conservation Commission. George. Uh I'd say two. Okay. Pat. I say one given what's going to be coming up. Okay. Lynn? One. Okay. I was gonna okay. Two. I'm a two there. Uh Community Preservation Act Committee. Uh that's a, that's a one. George? Yeah, one. Okay. Pat? One. 
Okay, Lynn? One. And I am also a one. Community Safety and Social Justice Committee? A one. Okay. One. Pa All right. Uh, Lynn? I'm undecided. You want us to come back to you? Sure. Okay, I am a one there and I'm happy to explain that. Mm -hmm. um, we're gonna, we're now halfway down the list. So I'm gonna switch the order. I'm gonna throw, wow. throw everybody yeah. off. George just had Good. to go first the whole time. Disability Access Advisory Committee, Lynn. One. Okay, Pat. One, hey, I'm still in the middle. <laughs> oh, you're right, sorry. Uh, That's I'm fine. A, I, I, I'll throw myself in here. I'm a two and George. Two. Okay. Uh, Amherst Cultural Council, Lynn. One with a reason to be explained. Okay. Um, Pat? Amherst Cultural Council. Are you asking me? I'm sorry. I got yes, we are. Yes. We're asking you. That's okay. Um, Welcome to my list. Uh, maybe a, a two. two. I don't know. It's not. Okay. I'm a two. And George? Three. Three. Okay. Yep. Uh, Energy and Climate Action Committee, Lynn. One. Okay, Pat. One. All right, I am a one and happy to explain why. George. One. Okay. Uh, Historical Commission. We'll switch it up one more time. Pat. Uh, histor two. Okay, Lynn. Two. Okay, I'm a three. George. Three. Okay. Human Rights Commission, Pat? One. Okay. Lynn? One. Okay. I am a two. George? Two. Okay. Planning Board, Pat? One. Okay. Uh, Lynn? One. Okay. I'm actually a two here. Uh, George? Yeah, I think I'm a two as well. Okay. Public Shade Tree Committee, Pat? Three. Okay, Lynn. Three. Okay, I'm a three, George. A three. Okay, and Transportation Advisory Committee, I will go first for once, one. Um, George. One. Uh, Lynn. One. Okay, and Pat. One. Okay. So let's let's pause here for a second. Um, I want to offer opportunities for folks who had said they wanted to explain um, oh. their reasoning. So I'm trying to remember their Public Arts Commission. Lynn, you had something you wanted to say, and I wanted to note this one specified through June 2024 only. Right. So there's a reason I'm assuming. The, that's part of my reason. The re and the other reason is, uh, which goes along with this reason, there is actually an active discussion going on about a merging public arts commission and cultural council okay. because the one has a mission and the other one has money and mm -hmm. <laughs> That's the very yeah, and, right. and one of them is going to have to be involved in the elementary school art project yeah um, present for it so i i think that that for the moment and this year i think it's important mm. excuse me sorry um, okay, thank you. Any other thoughts on this or would anyone like to shift, change their uh, rank order? Because I was trying to switch everybody's order up. I don't know whose vote was whose. We had two threes and two twos for public art and two twos, one one and one three for Amherst Cultural Council. I thought I was a one for public art. Maybe not. Oh, I had you as a two, but I can switch you out to be a one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh. All right, um, Board of Health, did anyone have anything to add on that one? Oh, I do actually. I think Lynn, yeah, yeah, you do. Um, okay. Part of the conversation that's going on in TSO about waste hauling involves oh. Board of Health. And yep. if depending on how that goes, that committee could be very important. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Council on Aging, anyone have any comments on that one? No. I put it as oh, one oh, because mm -hmm. I feel like uh, there's been a lot of activity in terms of uh, the bang center and the needs of the mm -hmm. elderly, uh, and and I th I think that they it would be helpful for them to have some connection to the council. 
I'm inclined to agree with you. Agree. Uh, Conservation Commission, Pat, you had said you had a comment on this, I believe. I think given that there's all this stuff that's going to be coming up with solar bylaws and things like that, um, I would love to uh, see if the Conservation Commission feels like they need a liaison, I would like to support that. Okay. I think my reason for giving a two on CONCOM is um, they're one of the most well-organized and well-run committees that I've um, seen. And I think that in terms of, and I know that that's biased because I think I've seen them more than most other committees. However, um, I think that in terms of liaison, the role of a liaison uh, and how we spend our time, I think we would be equally served by someone agreeing to read minutes, which is pretty much all a liaison does anyway. So I guess I'm kind of walking that back or all a liaison has to do, a liaison can do, can attend, but um, yeah, I will, I'll walk that back. I'm gonna say a two, but I think I see your point. And I can go back to two listening to that, to your I, reasoning. I don't know. I think I just, I, I trust a lot of the folks that are on there because I've seen them in action, but that's that's really subjective to my own opinion. And, I, and if I understand the point of this exercise, it's to try and knock a few of these off um, because otherwise it we, is. Could just, we could just say, look, put them all, put them for the council. And if somebody wants one, go for it. I think the real issue is going to be what happens when the counselors look at this list and how many people actually are interested in serving on more than one? I um, mm -hmm. and then maybe nobody. And I remember when we first did this, we had trouble getting uh, even six or seven to want to be liaisons. Now maybe things have changed yeah. in the last year or two, but um, no. well, I guess we're looking for reasons to remove uh, a, uh, an item if we can. Um, yeah, is, are people That's comfortable fair. with that, or would they rather? Maybe the answer is just uh, put them all out there and see what happens. So George, I think my plan, or, or I guess, let me share with the committee. What do you think about if I, if when I present this, I say these are this is the list that GOL is recommending be considered top priority, and then I also include these are the committees that requested a liaison that we did not necessarily recommend be top priority, and these are the committees that did not seek a liaison. Okay. If so I include words, that so, as well. So you'll take the green list and break it into two. Yeah. Correct. That's okay. that's kind of my thought. Does that make sense to folks? And the thought being that if someone sees somebody in the category two and they really feel strongly they want to be liaison mm -hmm. for that group, yeah, um, I guess yeah. we're we're not saying no. Um, right, we're definitely not saying no. I mean, if we I want to be a liaison yeah. to a committee that didn't want one, so we can I do. I'm just we wondering that because if somebody, yeah. <laughs> can somebody we can want to be you could you could request to be a liaison of a committee that's not even on this list. My understanding is that we can. Is that correct, Lynn, to your knowledge? <laughs> the council decides which committees they want to have liaisons to. Right, so somebody proposes, yeah. with the council could vote and, and say yeah or no. All right. And they're all public meetings. So when we yeah. sit in the right. audience. People can just go. Know, there's they no... can just go. Right? Exactly. Right. Exactly. Right. All right. Okay. So I'm going to move down the list um, further. Lynn, you did not put a number in for, oh, sorry, Community Preservation Act Committee. I don't think, I think we all are clear on that one based on its relationship to the council. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, the... Community Safety and Social Justice Committee. Lynn, you did not put a uh, vote in. No, I went with now? a one eventually. It's, it's because oh, they had okay. a, very, a serious set of recommendations before the council. Yep, that was my rationale as well. Mm. Um, okay, do, 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 do. any further Disability Access Advisory Committee, any comments? Yeah, the reason I have one there uh, is because this is a committee that's often not listened to by the people that they need to speak with like Guilford. And even mm -hmm. Paul, who, you know, I have a lot of respect for Paul, but they're not heard. They're not um, reached out to uh, when things are coming up that ordinarily would affect them. They're also okay. planning to go through. They are hoping to become also a commission um, uh, as, as opposed to a committee. Um, mm -hmm. And I must admit, I'd like to stay on that committee because I've gotten close to the people mm -hmm. uh, and I don't think I overdo it. Um, you know, I just carry messages back and forth, but uh, okay. I think that they they need that support. Okay, thank you. Um, Amherst Cultural Council, Lynn, you spoke to this a bit earlier when you talked about Public Art Commission. Anything else to add? No. no? Okay. Um, Energy and Climate Action Committee, I rate everybody else also said one here. I will just say um, one of the reasons why I think this committee is particularly important to have a liaison is um, it was incredibly helpful to have them support uh, or their their support when it got to the goal setting process for the town manager. 
Um, yeah. This is one area where we have specific climate action goals and we, none of us as counselors, my understanding, I believe none of us as counselors work in the climate space. So it was really helpful to have our expert um, expert folks uh, having conversation and the liaison able to kind of carry that back into the goals conversation. Sounds good to me. Um, historical commission got lower marks from us. It looks like this one will not make the cut for our, our final mm -hmm. list. Any comments on that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Human rights commission, this one is split down the middle. Any comments for or... About yeah, I, I want to just comment. They actually would like to, in this year, change their charge. And there's a there's some serious disagreement about that. And so okay. um, it, it is, you know, it's appointed by the town manager, but nevertheless, they are the committee that reviews the human rights complaints mm -hmm. across the town. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They, de okay. they, they have asked for a liaison a couple times in the last several months okay what are they seeking to gain from having a liaison Do you know? I, just, I think just more um more maybe appreciation for what they do more mm -hmm. understanding Awareness. of what they do yeah. they're yeah. a big okay. sponsor of uh events right. in town that's right that's right yeah, yeah. that right. makes a lot of sense to me i wasn't sure because i i think when you were when you were speaking, it sounded almost like they were seeking advocacy. And again, like how do we make sure that we're clarifying right. that right. that role and responsibility? But that makes a lot of sense. Um, planning board. I want to speak to my two here. Um, planning board is another one, and I this is the the controversial hot take. They already send us their minutes and their agendas and their packets. Um, every counselor gets that. Pam sends them out. I don't feel, Pam Sadler, um, I don't feel that an, a liaison benefits the council to this committee because we already received so much information from them on a really regular and consistent basis. So while I understand that a lot of their work relates closely to the council's work, um, I don't actually think that a liaison shifts anything about how we work with the planning board. That's my, that's my hot take. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would have some sympathy with that view. I'm wondering if we just uh, take it off the board completely um, and just just let take it off. That would be I mean, I think we should. Me. I'm sorry. Yeah. Why don't let well, me clarify? So we have why don't we redo if, if after the discussion, folks are feeling differently. Let's redo the ranking, the one through three here. Let's not um, boot it. I want to change my vote. I want to change my vote. Okay, George, what do you, what's your, what's <laughs> your board new, becomes what's your a three. It becomes a three. Okay, three. Pat. Three. Okay, Lynn. Uh, two. Okay, and I'm a three. Okay. Um, public Shade Tree Committee, any thoughts? We have threes across the board that's here. That's going. That's three. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think it's, they do good work, but it's, that's great. it's distant I love from them. the work I've of the council. great events, but right, it's not, yeah. Um, Transportation Advisory Committee, I think this is one where we know that we're working on a commission here and the um, this will be, I think, really an important one. I want to note that TAC specifically requested a liaison from TSO. Andy has served in this capacity for the past couple of years and it has been really beneficial to have um, a liaison report back to TSO as they are the committee that works most closely with, with TAC and will work most closely with any future Transportation Commission. Um, TAC has also really struggled to figure out their place. Part of, that's part of why um, that commission is, is looking to take shape to figure out what their responsibility and what their ownership is over some of these decisions. Um, but generally a lot of things around public way, a lot of things around um, projects go through TAC. We all voted it a one. I just wanted to explain why I think so they're, they're part I want, of it. I, let me throw out a thought here. What, what if we were to leave that up to, to TSO and just take it off the board? In other words, we just assume that TSA no. will sort that out. Why not? It, because it still, I still think it needs to be a formalized liaison. Really? Yeah. Because then you're, I mean, TSO is going to be having, it probably will turn out to be somebody from TSO. Um, and if it isn't somebody from TSO, then um, it seems like duplication. It seems like, you know, why, why would yet another counselor be, because TSO is going to be in constant, mm -hmm. I assume will be in constant communication. At least it was when I was on on this this committee we were in constant communication with with attack uh, um i think so, that the i think yeah yeah Just, i think that the confusion over tax charge has amplified in the past couple of years george i think that that the um and so while there has been communication between tech and tso at least when i was on tso for the past couple of years uh, it's been more of um it hasn't been as smoothly integrated and so i think that you're 
your experience on TSO may not have been the case for the past couple of years. Um, so how's the liaison and could be, there? It sounds like it was beneficial. How's the liaison well, going to help that? The liaison would report back on what TAC is working on and, you know, how their discussions would go. Hmm. Um, but it wasn't. Okay. And you wouldn't have a problem with the fact that that likely would be a person who's sitting on TSO, but that's, you know. Okay. Yeah. No, I don't know. All right. So, then, go ahead. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, the other that. thing is that the town manager is working with the TAC chair at this point mm -hmm. to actually come forward with a proposal right. for a transportation okay. commission. Right. And that may actually take some responsibilities from the council. Um, over, over some thank council you, dead bodies, but... <laughs> <laughs> All right. So where I'm going with this is we've got six, uh, six committees that have all ones here. So Amherst okay. Affordable Housing Trust Fund, uh, Council on Aging, CPA, yeah. or Community Preservation Act, excuse me, Community Safety, Social Justice, right. uh, Energy and Climate Action, and Transportation Advisory. Those are our like bucket one ideal ones, mm -hmm. um, or top kind of top level. Mm -hmm. Then we have uh, in the next tier, we've got Board of Health, um, and then Conservation Commission, Human Rights Commission, and Disability Access Advisory. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, I'm trying to do quick averages in my head. Um, then we get into Public Art, Cultural Council, and then we have Planning Board and Public Shade Tree. That's sort of the rough out. That's the I will I'll I'll order these, but um, just kind of confirming those those six were the ones that we are seeming to really be prioritizing. Right. So do we want um, to list them all with, with numbers or do we want to do some editing and take some I'm going to take the, the numbers out. I'm going to take hmm. the numbers out and I'm going to say these are the top six or maybe mm -hmm. I can say the top eight if folks are feeling strongly that Board of Health and um, Board of Health Human Rights Commission and the ones who got like one or two twos. So if we up it, that's nine. So that would include, here's here's our final list if we go with the ones kind of the top half here. Amherst Affordable Housing Trust Fund. Board of Health, Council on Aging, Conservation Commission, Community Preservation Act Committee, Community Safety Social Justice Committee, Disability Access Advisory Committee, Energy and Climate Action Committee, Human Rights Commission, and Transportation Advisory Committee. I think that's nine. Do you wanna go with those nine as our recommended? Um, and we wanted human rights in the top category, we agree? They're in there, yep. They got okay. two ones and two twos. Hmm. Lynn? Yeah, so one option is do two shades of, of green. Yeah. On this list. That's I also think it would be useful for the council to see the other lists. But um, and I agree. I'll be glad to give an explanation about how we got to these lists. I also think there's a possibility we may hear from the Recreation Commission. And uh, okay. I we might as well discuss it now because hmm. we had a liaison to them in the past. I, you know, so that was, that's been me, the recreation yeah. committee. Hmm. And um, I don't think that they're, I don't think I was very useful for them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I have some questions about some of the committees that did not request one. And one of them that stood out to me was the personnel board. Um, and I'm not as, as closely familiar with their work, but one of the reasons it stood out to me is uh, one of the things the council has asked Paul to do is undergo a staffing study. Um, and as we think about that particular end, and, and this is touchy, right? Because it's very close to overstepping the bounds of the council. But if we're asking for a, a staffing study, is that likely to be the group that, it, that would be the closest to that? Um, and so I, I think that was something that piqued my interest as a possible uh, liaison. Lynn? Um, they would very likely be involved, but I again, I see it as more advisory to the town manager mm -hmm. than, and I, I really do think there's a, a fine line there. Yeah. I understand. I think for me, it was, as we look at the the goals that we set for the town manager, a lot, one of them is about uh, how the how the operating end of the town functions, right? And so I think that there's not, I don't think that it would be completely out of line, but I recognize the fine line that it does walk. Can I ask just a procedural um, question? 
Sure. When this finally goes to council and say Councillor X uh, looks at our list and proposes uh, a different body they want to sit on, then the mm -hmm. entire council votes on whether to approve that or not. Is that how it works? The entire council votes to approve any liaison appointment that right. any councillor indicates an so interest in. Normally, there'd be a list. People would put their names on it, and then that would be that. And we'd vote on it as the entire list. But if someone proposes something that's not on, on any list, um, uh, how is that going to play out? Is that, is that, I, we would I add it to the yeah. line. I'm sorry? The we'd council, add it to the list. Yeah, but I think the council does have to agree because, again, I want to go back to what is the role of a right. right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if a councillor wants to attend a committee meeting, they can attend any committee meeting they want right. to. Right. Mm -hmm. So I think that what we could then do is say we have to vote them all individually. Mm -hmm. Which would be time consuming and, and we got enough things not to do, but yeah. Um, I'm just thinking some of these bodies, uh, you know, like take, for example, personnel boards, I, that, you know, you mm -hmm. uh, or someone said, I really want to be in personnel board. And we hadn't mm -hmm. put it on the list. It, they didn't ask for one. Um, that goes to a vote of the full council? Correct. Okay. We are appointed by the full council. So it and I'm, I'm particularly thinking planning board. One way or another. Yeah, I'm thinking planning board. Someone's going to say, I want to be on planning board. And, mm -hmm. Sure. Um, you know, if that's on a list of nine committees or nine, and, and it's a, it's a, if we're voting on all of them, I mean, would I make a motion to but remove one of them and say, I want. No, we're not voting them? on those. Y yeah, you would. If yeah. we were going to vote it on a slate, you'd vote to. Take it off and then make an slate. argument why we shouldn't have a liaison for that body. If you yeah. really wanted to do that, you could do that. Yeah, I would actually. Um, okay. Because we've made some good arguments today why it shouldn't have a liaison. But, I hear you. Um, all right, Lynn, and then I'd like to move forward on this because sure. I think we're yeah. shifting into how we're I'm, I'm just going to suggest a process that I think would help us get through the council. We have okay. the first nine list and we vote that as a list. Okay. If somebody wants to remove, fine. We have the second. And at that point, we say we're not, these are recommended. If somebody wants that list, something on that list, then we go through the process okay. of voting an additional one. And then would you say, and if, if there are any uh, bodies that someone wants to be a liaison for that we are not on any list that we've presented to you, would you go to that third step or not? Yeah, but again, I, I mean, you don't have to. I mean, you, you can just leave, leave it, yeah. You know, if you just want to know what this committee is doing and you want to make public comment, just, just go, go to the meeting. Right. Go to yeah. the meeting. Right. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I think I think that the implication of having a liaison is is that the, the council is there and is observing in some way in a formal capacity versus just someone there as a as a resident right like i think that that's the the implication of having liaison um and and so some committees want that some committees don't and some committees want it for a totally different reason but um okay so what i'd like to do is um vote to recommend to the council the following committees for liaisons with the understanding that we will also include in the memo the remaining committees that we are not um, strongly recommending, as well as committees that did not seek liaisons and those that um, already have council members or have no response. That's my plan. Does that sound good? So okay. basically, yeah. So four four so, groupings. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think I I think I need a formal vote on this, don't I? I think probably it would be wise for us to do it. Let's just year. do it. Yeah. All right. So uh, I move that the GOL committee recommend the following committees uh, receive council liaisons for 2024. The yeah. Amherst Affordable Housing Trust Fund, the Board of Health, the Council on Aging, the Conservation Commission, Community Preservation Act Committee, Community Safety and Social Justice Committee, Disability Access Advisory Committee, Energy and Climate Action Committee, Human Rights Commission and the Transportation Advisory Committee. Do I have a second? Second, do you have a I just okay. point out that that's 10 committees. Oh, uh, 10. I counted yes. 10 feels yes, fine. I didn't say it's a number 10. in my motion just know, to make right. sure I didn't I screw just that so up. That was really intentional, George. It was 10. No, I know. That's okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, all right. Let's take the vote here. Uh, Lynn. Aye. Thank you. Pat. Aye. Uh, George? Aye. 
and I am an I as well. So it's four in favor, zero opposed, one absent. All right, Lynn, you can take that down. Thank you so much. All right, folks, we're going to move on to finance. Um, so the deal with the finance committee is that the notice has, oh, Lynn. Go ahead. Okay. No, um, no. The... no, don't go or go. Go ahead. Okay. So the notice has been posted on the bulletin board. Our responsibility is to see if we have a sufficient applicant pool. Um, I have reached out to prior applicants uh, and we have received two, uh, I, we received another one this afternoon, two um, uh, CAFs. I always mix up with a committee or community or community act activity form. There we go. Um, and as of the posting. So those are the ones that are valid. I did reach back out. Um, I would like to shout out someone who has since been selected for multiple other leadership roles who just wrote me back, ha, uh, when I asked if they would like to resubmit a, a CAF for this. But we uh, have one vacancy and two applications. They, um, I don't know if the, the file had been updated to reflect the one we received about a couple hours ago. Lynn. I think we have three or four. Is my list wrong? Well, there's um, something something in our uh, GOL SharePoint. It, it's something. hard to decide who we've heard from. Yes. Right. We had two going into the, our last meeting, and I don't know who submitted this afternoon, but so, an, another person submitted um, earlier this, uh, late last week. So I believe you have to look at the um, the submission date on that on the Excel document in the file that's not the public Let me file. Try to find that. Um, we had we had one individual submit one a couple times, but only one of them was after the deadline of the ninth, or not the deadline, the start the start point of the ninth, and then we had a second one come in today. Unless I missed one, that's my that was my read on this. Um, trying to find this. We had a couple come date. in right before it, but. Um, submission so, date is the second second. So we had a number of people applying see, before okay. before the actual yep. opening was posted. Yeah, so they and had unfortunately, to, they, had to they after after the post, they have to submit again. Yeah, okay. so that's something right. that is a a consideration for a future shift in in bylaws if we want to look at our appointment policy to multi, multiple member bodies. Um, but right now we have we have two folks. Um, the other one is not showing up on our sheet yet, which is understandable. I think Athena was just in class, I, so I'm not not faulting that at all. But we have two. Are so are um, you saying the person that submitted uh, on January second isn't eligible? They just have to That's resubmit. Correct. They, they have, have to, resubmit. to resubmit. Isn't that wild? Why? Yeah. Well, uh, because technically you cannot submit a calf before the opening has been posted, and this was posted on on February 9th. Um, and, and so have we, they been notified? Yes, they have been notified. Um, and so we've received two from the folks. So two of the folks have resubmitted, um, waiting to hear back from others. But remember, we if we decide to move forward and determine the pool sufficient today, we can people can still submit CAFs up until we we determine the deadline for statements of interest. Lynn. So I I move that we the pool is sufficient. I want to clarify just for a second because mm -hmm. we have two, one vacancy, two applicants that are. That's correct. Yeah, that seems that seems not. That's not sufficient. Yeah, and even if it were three, I would be happy. Um, yeah, even it's if also there were three, early, it's early in the game. I mean, this this position. Am, am I missing something here? Is that it? I, maybe I am. In other words, this this is supposed to be filled ASAP because it only runs until uh, June 30th. Is that what we're doing? I think the, I think you the understanding this to me is that before. Yeah. No, 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 it's fine. So I think the reason why we want to push this one is because they're about to jump into the budget process um, and, and getting them seated before that. Athena, do you have a? This conversation is beginning to get hard to follow uh, because everyone's talking at the same time. Yeah. So I'm not going to tell Anna, how you, how to do your job, but if, if we could take turns, it would be easier to hear everyone. Um, and then the other thing that I wanted to say is that um, I didn't update the table this afternoon, obviously, so one is missing, and I had another point, and now I'm forgetting it. I'll raise my hand again when I think of it. Thank you, and thank you, Athena. That's a good reminder, folks. We will be going back to our raise hand functions, please. So, yes, the the George, the 
um, expedient nature of this was due to the budget process beginning soon and uh, wanting to have someone seated so that they're not coming in in the middle of that process because we still have to go through it. Athena, did I get that wrong? <laughs> No, I'm sorry. Lynn had made a motion. There's a motion on the floor. Um, if there's a second. Um, I withdraw my motion. We have a hanging. I withdraw the motion. Okay, thank you. I apologize, Athena. I hadn't recognized it as a, as a motion. Thank you so much. Lynn, you withdrew your motion? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, so at this point, there is no motion. Oh, George. Just a comment. Um... I understand the desire to fill the position, but I personally think it's more important to have appoint someone that we that we have strong confidence in and that we feel fits the requirements. Then we we yeah. rush ahead just to fill the position because of the budget process. Maybe it'll turn out to only be two people on FinCom for the next month or so, and the third person will come in the middle of things, and that's unfortunate. But um, I. I just don't, yeah, I'm open to argument here, but I don't see the need to rush it, especially with such a small pool. Uh, we're mm -hmm. talking right now, two official and maybe three. Um, and this is a very important, well, they're all important. So uh, I'm, okay. what's the counter to that? I, I, I wanna hear it because I, I'd be glad to change my mind. Sure, um, Lynn, before I before I call on you, the, the counter, George, is that folks can still submit their CAFs even once we've determined the pool to be sufficient. So mm -hmm. we aren't limiting other folks from submitting. What it does allow us to do is start moving ahead in the process of determining the selection guidance and interview questions. Okay. Um, yeah. I can argue both sides of this, to be honest with you. I think that that, we could, that could be rushing the process before we know if we will get more CAFs. So I don't think that we should approve a, approve a candidate pool in the hopes that more people will submit. I think if we approve a candidate pool, it's because we think it's ready, knowing that people can still submit. That would be my, that's my opinion. Lynn? Um, I'd like to ask, uh, first of all, Athena, when is the term for this person supposed to end? June. Uh, I just had it pulled up, sorry. I didn't mean to answer for Athena. It is in, I just sent it. Somebody answer. <laughs> hang on, hang on. I'm pulling it up. Give me a minute. I think Athena's driving. Let her drive safely. Athena, I think, get it. I think it's Bob Hegner's term, and I think you're right. It is. It's, it is. it's June. I know it's June. I just wanted okay. to confirm June. it's June okay. of this year. So it is, it's time. All right. And and the question I would raise then is whether or not we really should be looking at whoever we're appointing to do this to finish this term and take on another term and uh, that's number one the second thing is the last time we I, I can't remember whether it was the last time or the time before we only had three candidates for one slot okay I'm not seeing any motions to determine the pool sufficient at this point if someone would like to make one i am happy to hear it um and entertain it but otherwise um yeah uh sorry to be clear this is june 20th, 30th 2025 so it's a year and change okay. long time all right not I'm uh lynn i'm gonna go back to move the the pool assuming we have three I'm moving that the pool. We cannot there. assume we have three. We cannot uh, assume we have three. I thought Athena said that she did. She just didn't get to post it. No, there are two. One is not posted. Oh. One is posted. One is not posted. Athena, correct me if I misunderstood. We had another that came in prior to the deadline that has not resubmitted yet. Oh. From this year. And I've reached out to folks. Um, I don't, they have not probably had enough time yet since I've reached out to them to, to submit their CAFs again, but um, I did reach out to folks from the past two years. It's worth noting, I mean, uh, of the list, some of them are currently on the finance committee, so. So I'm sorry, Lynn, Lynn has made a motion again, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yes, but is, I, there, is there a second? Right. So yeah. Lynn's made a motion to find the pool sufficient. Is there a second? Mm 
Motion okay, guide. Not, There's no not seeing a second. That motion fails. Um, we will revisit this at our next meeting. Um, at that point, we will see if we have a um, a sufficient pool again. Okay. Um, moving on to, hang on, I have too many tabs open. Yes. <laughs> Sufficiency of applicant pool, nope. Okay, uh, 2024 Charter Review Committee appointment recommendations to town council. We are once again revisiting the sufficiency of the applicant pool. Um, this is also not a public document, but was in your folder. Um, and I believe we had, let's see, there are 12 in here. And I believe since that point, one person, or since this list was originally created, I believe one person had withdrawn um, their name from consideration. I, I am remembering that from a conversation, but I am seeking confirmation at some point from Athena that that is true, that this list is 12 people, not uh, 11 people, not 12. Uh, Athena? Last time I pulled the list, there was 12 and then one withdrew. I think the name should be crossed out on that sheet. So if it's, it's not out, showing up as crossed out, but that's that number wise, that um, is helpful. Yeah, last, okay. last I checked there. There were 11. Okay, um, so we have 11 applicants. Uh, George. So that's not sufficient. That's the same number as we had last time. Period, I'm sorry, it's not sufficient. Okay. Um, we are going we to be, <laughs> yes, it does, um, which why is really hard. So why can't we? Why can't we talk about some of these other things, even though we don't have sufficient? It's just because that's the way the process was created, and we have to follow it line by line. Yeah, I mean, why why can't we talk about what we're looking for and what um, what questions would be appropriate now, even though we don't yet have a sufficient pool? Why why is the sufficiency of the pool required for us to talk about these other things? Is my question. Good question. I'm pulling up the appointments. Uh, Athena. I don't think the process, the policy precludes the committee from discussing those things before the applicant pool is sufficient. Yes. We just can't vote on them until then? Um, I don't see why we couldn't I, use them. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not so looking at the I can read. policy. But I've got it. I, I think there is there is a specific process and there's some things that have to happen first, but I, I think you can talk about selection guidance questions at this point. I think we can discuss it. I am uh, trying to figure out, hang on one second. So selection mm -hmm. guidance prior to soliciting statements of interest, developing interview questions or holding interviews, the recommending committee shall adopt selection guidance. Um, so I think it's, I think we can go forward with that part um, I think, yeah, we can go forward with that part. Okay. Do you uh, want George? the memo, Athena? Hang on one, one second, Len. Let me, um, let me hear George's question first. Well, George? I'm uh, thinking out loud here. Does anyone see a potential problem with us talking about these things in public before we've actually declared the pool sufficient? Would that have some kind of, you know, bad influence or i mean i'm i'm not trying to it's just time is precious and um i understand yeah so does anyone see a problem i don't see a problem with that but that's because i probably don't see it there very well right so um the fact that we're talking about it and what we're looking for and the kinds of questions we might ask is now part of the public if we do this today which is on the agenda we could do it mm -hmm. um is then becomes part of the public domain is that going to affect the pool Applicancy, I yeah, you know, I don't know. I'm just wondering. Lynn, the document you're referring to is already in the packet. It's public, right? Yeah, it's already Good. in the packet. All right, so it's a stupid question, and that's the answer. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna start this, um, and I wanted to just touch base as we get into selection guidance. Uh, Lynn, did you have something else? I'm sorry. No, I'm trying to lower my okay. hand. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> All right, so. Um, Oh, the documents, the documents. I, I can get the one. document up. Okay. So I had reached out to um, counselors seeking their input regarding selection guidance and interview questions. We're going to start with selection guidance. Um, and what you're seeing here is verbatim copied from my email what folks sent me, um, not in any particular order. 
I tried to order the interview questions, but we're going to focus on selection guidance right now. Um, so let's see. As a reminder, while we already did solicit input for interview questions, the selection guidance comes first because interview questions should also relate back to the selection guidance. This is what we are using as we review statements of interest and as we um, move forward in interviews, thinking about what we want to have front of mind as we are thinking about the who will comprise this committee. Um, I'm gonna give folks a minute to read this through because I know this was a late add to the packet. Um, would anyone like me to read it out loud? Lynn. I don't want you to read it out loud. I want, <laughs> I want to suggest that across the entire committee, some of these things would be important, but mm -hmm. not but not everyone on the committee needs to possess these characters. Right. Right. Okay. I think that is, yes, thank you. Okay. Can you make um, it a I little agree, bigger? Linda. Otherwise, like I, I can pull up the doc. I have oh, no, I'll make it bigger. Hold on. Just okay. let me let me lower my hand. Thank you. Um, George? And make it Lynn bigger. makes a very good point. Um, it's selection mm -hmm. guidance. So I think the term is meant to reflect that these are, you know, it's not like you must fill each of these criteria. And if you don't, then you're out. It's simply mm -hmm. things that we will consider in evaluating a candidate. And they're not in any particular mm -hmm. order. Um, right. And so I don't know if it's worth putting that in some statement somewhere, but I think the word guidance is meant to uh, co convey that thought. Um, and it's certainly the, the way we're approaching this, um, that if somebody looks at this and goes, well, I don't know anything about the charter, so I, I shouldn't apply for right. this body. Right. That shouldn't be there. Right. Pat, um, raise your hand. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I'll shut up. Okay, so I think George, it's a really it's a good point, and I think when we post uh, when we post the selection guidance, we can include an introductory sentence that says something like, you know, the committee shall include membership which may ha include the following or something like that. Like so. essentially saying your point is no one person needs all of these things, but the committee as a whole should have some sort of representation from each of them in some way. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, that, that's basically it's kind of our approach. Lynn, Lynn okay. was saying, and I agree. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Sorry, Lynn. Yes, I agreed. Um, okay. So going through this, are there any objections to anything on the list of selection guidance? We have, I'm not going to read it. I already promised I wouldn't read it out loud. George? So how important is it that they actually have read the charter and know the charter? I mean, I, I have to confess Maybe I shouldn't confess this in public, but it's not a document that I read that often. And if someone gave me, a, gave me a quiz on it, um, I'd probably have to do some studying. Um, so when we say familiarity with the charter and familiarity with restrictions on what a charter review committee can and cannot do, that strikes me as something that would be the first order of business once this body was formed. Mm -hmm. Everyone would go home and read the charter and come back with questions. And they'd also be instructed as to what the limits are. And the fact that they may not know what they are uh, beforehand, I'm not sure is, I guess I'm just asking, how important is it to people mm -hmm. that somebody be a, a charter whiz um, or even know much about the charter um, in terms of our evaluation of them as a potential member of this committee? It's a question. Pat, uh, or would anyone like to respond to George's question? Lynn, is yours in response to George? Yes. And again, Go ahead. it's across the committee you would have this. So I, I, I really hope at least one or two people on this committee <laughs> have had some familiarity with the charter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't mean that they all have to have that. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lynn. Pat? Um, there's a way in which people read these things uh, and think they have to have it. And uh, there are people who are in the pool right now who have familiarity with the charter. I don't think it should be there. I agree with George. Um, we we want this pool to be a group of people who are really interested. I'm thinking about someone who uh, got on the redistricting commission and hadn't done anything like that before and did a stellar job. So I I, I think that I don't think either one of those things should be there. As George said very clearly, you tell them what the rules are 
and that's you know and that that would <laughs> and then so i don't know i just don't see the mm -hmm. point mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i think my response to george's oh pat are you done i apologize yeah, okay um my response to george's question is i think that the first one um is more important than the second one i think that having someone with familiarity of the charter would be helpful and for all the reasons that lynn said i think that the second point has will be made clear and also was very clearly in the um bulletin board posting and in the committee charge and all of that so i think the second i'm less i'm less concerned with the second one um and and more i i do think it would be beneficial to have someone who might be really familiar with the charter and its ins and outs um that said you know i uh I know that this committee is being staffed by a very someone who knows the charter very very well um and so i'm sure that they will you know have a good grounding in that um who who i think would be willing to give you a quiz on the charter george if you ever athena i don't know if that's something you'd be interested in but i i, I bet george is excited to take one um so i do think that there's it's there is false, merit maybe. to having <laughs> i do think that there is merit to having um familiarity with the charter itself in there um but i don't my question is how do you prove that um, yeah right. I, for me that's my bigger that's my bigger question of how we frame this lynn um again i think the thing that's really confusing in all of this is it doesn't say what you said earlier anna and that is mm -hmm. across the committee we're looking mm -hmm. for people with this so that mm -hmm. and i you know, I, with all due respect, I think uh, the person who's going to staff this committee is not just stellar and knows the charter, but she wasn't mm -hmm. on the previous charter commission. She wasn't mm -hmm. in town for the debates. Mm -hmm. And some of that previous knowledge is useful. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. we, during, during this charter discussion in the past, we discussed this. Here's some of our thinking. Um, you know, you can get that from other people too, but I, um, I would find it frankly bizarre if they weren't familiar with the charter, bluntly. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And Pat? Uh, yeah. Uh, hold on. I want to get it so I can. Uh, one of the things I was thinking, uh, if you want to commit, uh, can keep familiarity with the charter, charter itself in there. I really think there are some of the things that are more important to me, and the charter is important in the knowledge, but pro, um, mix of perspectives, skills, ages, and occupations, demographic diversity, uh, diversity of residency. Those are things that I feel like should be at the top of our list um, because it, positioning them there is encouraging to uh, a range of people who might be hesitant to apply for this. So if you want to keep okay. familiarity with the charter, I would like to see it lower down on the list. Okay, and I do want to just remind you, this list was literally what I got in order that I received it. Yeah, there yeah, yeah. No ordering yeah, yeah. Of this. Yeah, um, the judgment. But I the hear, judgment. okay. I also think it'll be important to specify in that little description that we give that the following are not presented in any rank order. Um, unless that's what we are intending, which I don't think personally is helpful. Um, I, I think that Lynn, what you're saying though, gets back to my question of what, how do you prove familiarity with the charter? Um, and I think that your point is valid of understanding this was a, a bruising undertaking for this town when we went through it the first time. And so I, I understand where you're coming from and saying there's merit from someone, from hearing from someone who's familiar with the charter in the context of that first process. Um, but I don't think that that is the same thing as familiarity with the charter. Someone could have moved here, you know, a year ago and learn it really, really well. So I'm, I, I'm wondering if you would like to reframe this in some way of saying familiarity with the charter process the first time or however you want to frame that, um, yeah. if that gets at more so what you're seeking. Mm. No, to me, it's all in how you ask the question, okay? Um, if they're familiar with the charter, somebody, gee, 
how have you gained familiarity with the charter? And somebody says, well, I was on the previous charter commission. Okay. Somebody else says, you know, as we started the new form of government, I read the charter. I've actually used this section of the charter. And other people just say, you know, I'm not that familiar with it. That's fine. As long as we so have, it's, 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 again, it's just across the committee, it would be good to have. I hear that, but I, I think I'm, I'm not sure if I'm clarifying my, my question or what's sticky for me is you're talking about the question we asked, which is great, but what are we measuring the answer against, right? And, and typically we're measuring the answers against the selection guidance. And so if someone is, is answering, you know, how they've experienced the charter, what's the, what are we looking for? Again, not from every person, but from at least one, it sounds like we're seeking what? Is it just knowledge of it that they know it inside out and can quote it? Is it that they were engaged in the process in the past? Is it, and, and I know that we can add that clarifying languages, but language in, but I think that if there's something beyond just being able to quote it or have read it or something like that, um, I, I'd want that to be specified because again, I think what we put in the selection guidance um, drives what questions we ask and, and what we're, looking for in the composition. So I think when I read familiarity with the charter, I see it as I can tell you exactly what's in it, not necessarily that I've experienced it. But, but that's what I'm saying. That's how that reads to me. And, and maybe I'm alone in that. But I think familiarity with the charter itself does not read as has experience with the charter process or anything like that. George? I'd like to bracket this for a moment and look to some of the other okay. characteristics. Could we do that? and then come back sure let's let lynn yep let's have lynn make a comment and then we can come back to it i mean maybe it's just in was engaged in the discussions in the last charter revision or something like that and that means you could have been on a committee or not on a committee you could have been testified before them you could have been on a previous select board when they were asked there's all kinds of ways in which you could have been engaged in the previous mm -hmm. charter discussion that's all Okay. Um, engagement. Okay, let's move on and come back to this, George. So, um, what do people feel about um, suggesting that someone who's had some prior experience on a town board or committee, um, or has served as an elected official in some town, not necessarily in Amherst, is that something that we would be interested in? Um, I agree with Pat, mix of perspectives, skills, ages, and occupations, demographic diversity, that makes sense. Diversity of residency, uh, help me here, it's just my English. That simply means people have, not everybody's lived here for 40 years. Is that what that means? Or does it mean they live in different parts of town? What does that mean? The latter. Yeah, okay, I believe parts. that the intention is the latter. So they come from different parts of the town. Okay. Mm -hmm. So kind of. What, yeah, so demographic diversity is also, so you're talking geographic diversity, demographic diversity, uh, mix of perspectives. What do people think about prior service? Um, and I also would like to throw in engagement, volunteer, engagement in the community, um, some uh, experience or activity in the community, or if not in our community, some other community. Could be anything, um, sports, you know, uh, tutoring, schools, uh, whatever. Um, people feel those are i'd be looking for that even more than than charter expertise which is be somebody who um is active in their community mm -hmm. and not just sitting at um, home reading reading the charter <laughs> hey don't knock my weekend plans <laughs> I know, exactly. uh i my take on this is i i'd like to really um stand behind including some committee membership that has experiences on boards or committees uh, uh yeah some charter review committee experience from folks with experience on boards and committees, because I think those are the folks that, depending on the committee, work closely with the with the council, but also are bound by the charter themselves and how they work, right? And so I think that it's important to include that perspective. I think that our committees, um, having served as a liaison, our committees get really frustrated with certain elements of the charter because they bump up against it when they're trying to mm -hmm. make changes. So I do think that committee membership uh, or, or committee experience is an incredible asset to this. I also do see the the historical perspective of 
why things were in the charter in the first place being important to have on there and being not that can't be the entire committee right i think that it's really important to have have folks who did not were not part of that discussion and conversation as well i think for me it's really that blend um but i will go to bat for having the i didn't write it but having um prior experience in town government on a committee or something like that i think that that is really important again not for everybody but for some members yeah. lynn yeah, I just want to go back to saying not everybody. I can't mm -hmm. imagine appointing a nine-member committee where nobody on that committee has ever been involved in any other town committee. I mean, all I'm saying is two or three of them have had committee experience. Not everybody. Not everybody lives on, you know, Podunk Street. It's it's trying to get a good mix. Um, I'd like to propose something that sort of a little bit of a thought exercise here. When we are reading this, because we haven't added in the sentence that clarifies it, would you be happy with a committee that had one person for each of these bullet points? And if so, what is missing? Right. I know that's not possible, no, but true. that's the idea. Right. So if you have one person that has familiarity with the charter, one person that has prior service on the town committee, one person who has a different age than everyone else, one person who has right. So read through these is that a robust and effective committee and if not what is missing or what is unnecessary george i would like to see members of the committee who are active and engaged in their community across the board and there's involved and engaged at some level i'd like to know okay. something yeah community so prior engagement. experience not just community engagement just engage with their community um and, and uh, you know, uh, not just outreach, but we have prior experience in community engagement slash outreach, um, which I think is relevant to some of the things that this committee is going to, this commission is going to have to do uh, in terms of outreach, which is understandable. But I'm talking about something different, which mm -hmm. is evidence of the fact that they are um, engaged in our community, um, you know, that they, um, you know, our, in terms of volunteerism, activity, engagement, um, do people feel that's important? I think it's important. I would want to, I'd like to think everybody on this body would, but certainly it'd be something I'd be curious about, um, you know, and if not in our town, in some other town, um, evidence of community. So to clarify. Okay, so to clarify, and you're speaking about non-governmental community engagement. Yeah, exactly. So volunteerism versus, mm -hmm. you know, okay. I mean, you could you could put it all in one big category, but I'm separating out a specific involvement with town government and boards and committees from mm -hmm. just general volunteerism engagement with the community at large. And I think both of those are important. I think that's, uh, that's just me. I don't know. Maybe you don't agree. But no, I agree with that. Yeah, I'd hands, like hands, that. hands, hands. No. Trisha. Um, okay, so... George, I, I think I get what you're saying. If we add in a framing of prior community engagement outside of town government, would that suffice? I don't want to, I, I would like to steer us away from specifically, and I don't think you were suggesting right. this, right. specifically suggesting only volunteerism, because I do think that that privileges folks who are who have time and, and right. resources right. to volunteer. Right. But right. I think that it's valid to say that those people would engage with the charter and the town differently than someone who's engaged on a committee. Um, Fair. Any disagreement to, to putting that in? I haven't framed it exactly, but something along the lines of prior community engagement outside of town government. Fine. Okay, That's seeing no I objections. Okay. No, I think it's a valid, I, I think it's yeah. valid. Yeah. Anything else as we look at this? Do we have, if we have a, someone matching all of these, do we have a robust and effective committee? And they may not match all of them, right? Like that's the thing is we may have a committee that doesn't have, I put in um, prior experience in community engagement and outreach because it was so clearly explicitly spelled out in the charge mm -hmm. for this committee. Um, but I recognize that that may be a stretch. So I think we also are, yeah, that's the idea. The goal is, George. What about the last one? Uh, experience of, uh, in or knowledge of data collection methodology. Yeah, that was mine too. Um, right. And I put it in again, as I read through the charge of the committee, because 
Um, it talks specifically about um, develop and deploy a variety of feedback mechanisms uh, throughout the review process and analyze the feedback prior to initial preliminary and final reports. Um, I thought it might be helpful to have someone who had experience in that arena. Would it would it be right? To, would it's it be kind proper of, to phrase it prior experience with and knowledge of? So it should say prior experience or knowledge, not of. Sorry, that was a typo. Okay, so prior experience or knowledge of. With, it, we could say. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, having experience with or knowledge of data with, collection methodology. Yes. So okay, prior experience that. with or knowledge of data collection mm -hmm. methodology. Okay. What do people think about that? I'm fine. Does that sound good? Okay. okay. All right. Pat can we come back? Can, up, so can we can... come back to Lynn's um, and see if we can word yes. it um, the way that would capture what I think you and Lynn and and are trying to get? I think I'm becoming convinced that that something like this needs to be here. Um, but um, yes. Maybe, it... Yeah. How do we phrase it? Is a question. It... Oops. Lynn, go ahead, because I'm pulling up an email. I got one other email from a counselor after I'd written the memo, and I want to get their feedback as engagement, well. So, um, Lynn, go ahead. Prior engagement with a charter process. Okay, that's okay. good. Yeah, it could be, that could even be elsewhere, but idea, yeah. Okay. Prior engagement. With a charter. With, with a charter. A charter development process. With a charter guess. development process. Good, because I agree with you that that it would be strange to have a body like this and and nobody knows anything about the history yeah. of the charter. <laughs> that would be pretty bizarre. Um, can you read that to me one more time, Lynn? I'm sorry. So prior, prior in engagement with a charter committee process. Okay, thank you. Or charter development process. Development is the word you used. Yeah, development process. Okay. Development process. And uh, are you proposing that we strike familiarity with the charter itself and replace yeah. it with that? Okay, great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pat, your hand is up. Yeah, I want to make sure we strike the uh, restrictions Second of one. the charter. Right. Strike that. Oh, yes. Thank you. Strike that. Okay. Um, the other comment I received from it. Thank you, Pat, for that reminder. The other, I'm just going to read this out loud. Um, this comment said, while we want to cast the widest possible net to ensure the greatest community representation on the committee, I'd want to, excuse me, I'd want to know how closely applicants follow town government. Do they tune into town council meetings with some regularity? Do they at least time to time tune into some of the council committees or other committees, boards, and commissions? That seems to fall more under interview questions yeah. um, and falls under getting at the experiences that they've had with local government. Um, and then the next question was, again, this gets to interview questions, I think, but I'm going to read it in case you find selection guidance in it. Is it fair to ask what parts of town government that fall within the purview of the charter applicants feel may not be working as well as others? The intent of this question would be to form a committee with a wide range of perspectives on how town government is working. I think that's really more about the questions, not necessarily um, the selection guidance, and we can discuss it at a later time. I think what, what this person was getting at, though, was about the um, and this is actually one of my questions, was mix of perspectives. Oops. Mm. Um, I have a question as to how that is a tangible, what, what perspectives on what is my question. Um, we can have people with a mix of perspectives on what the best pasta sauce is, but that doesn't necessarily matter. So what are we seeking here? Perspectives on what? Lynn. I think you can get at this, but through the questions. For instance, you could say, what do you think has worked well with this charter or what do you think needs to be improved with this charter? And you'll get perspectives that way, but I don't think you're going to get that through guidance. So you, do you think that it's safe to keep mix of perspectives in the guidance? Cause I, I can see, I can see where you're coming from with, we don't want every single member on the committee to say, we only want this one thing to change and nothing else. We want diversity right. of thought. So do you think that mix of perspectives is both broad enough without being, I don't know. I mean, I, the, the reality is you have your selection criteria. You, I don't, I don't have any problem with it being in the selection criteria, but the, our guidance, but the reality is the only way you're going to get at that is through questions. 
I also think that we developed selection criteria so that we get a variety of perspectives. Like that is the entire purpose of having the selection criteria is that we don't have nine of exactly the same people. So I, I, do, I, I do think, however, one of the biggest worries about this committee is mm -hmm. that there is a diversity of perspectives. I think that's fair. I'm not feeling so strongly about it that we need to strike it. I do question what it means because I think it's a vague term. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I'm not, it's not a hill I feel the need to die on tonight. George. What if it said mix of life experiences, skills, ages, and occupations? What if it said that? Well, again, maybe it's, yeah. I, I agree. I don't know what perspectives means. It's a code word. Or it's, a, you know, it's like, yeah. Um, I mean, we can leave it in, but I don't really know what it means. So if we shift it to mix of life experiences, skills, ages, and occupations. Uh, just a suggestion. I don't know. Do Pat seems to like that. I know Pat what, life, exp I know what ahead, life experience Pat. means, okay. I think. <laughs> Pat? No, I'm just saying I, I like the change to life perspective, you know, different life experience. Okay. Um, okay, Lynn, I'm going to steal sharing from you for one second because I've been taking notes and I'm going to share the updated version if that's okay. Thank yeah, you. I didn't have a word version. I know it's because I can't, I, word docs and my brain don't go well. And so I use Google docs and then I can't. Okay. Uh, so selection guidance, prior engagement with the charter development process, prior service on a town board or committee or as an elected official in town or in another town prior community engagement outside of town government, mix of life experiences, skills, ages, and occupations. This I know all the grammar is wrong. Uh, demographic diversity, including racial, economic, gender, and generational diversity, diversity of residency, prior experience in community engagement and outreach, and prior experience with or knowledge of, yikes, data collection methodology. Lynn. Yeah, I think diversity of residency needs to be stated slightly differently. Um, maybe like geographic. Um, economic. It's when I think maybe, about maybe diversity of residency. Representative of, of all areas of town. Yeah, uh, representative of all areas of town, making sure you have people who are renters, make sure you have people that are homeowners. Um, so you know, that kind of thing, representative of... Mm. I think... Oh. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, Lynn, I'll wait till you're done. That's all. Maybe somebody Pat? can look for the better word. No, I just want to make sure... I, I still support flipping some of these so it doesn't start off with prior engagement with charter, prior service on board or committee, but... Because right. I, I, I really... I really... The de uh, demographic diversity... Of representative of all areas, you know, those are important issues. Um, I think representative of all areas of town okay. still needs work. George Hand, please. George sorry. Hand, please. That's okay. I'm I'm saying that because I was next and I want to go next. Um, so, go so, no, it's okay. It's okay. Um, Pat, can I put them in alphabetical order and specify that they are presented in alphabetical order? Because here's the reason why. Because what you are doing is you are emphasizing some as being more important than others. And I would like to get away from that. And I think it's really important that these not be presented as a rank order. Um, and if we put some at the front, just because those are the priorities, it's then gonna look like the entire list is in rank order. And okay. I think each of us may bring our own priorities to the table. Yeah, no, I hear that. But alphabetizing it would be fine because it leaving it the way it is does exactly what you said, but in a different with a different emphasis. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so saying so I think yeah. now this is selection guidance for us though, right? Yes, but it's public. Oh, okay. Yeah, then yeah. I mean it's already public, right? Like this is in the past. Yeah. Um yeah, my yeah. other oh shoot, I had another. Oh, Lynn, you were talking about um the geographic representation of town. And you mentioned a couple of things that I think are demographic, not geographic. And I want to clarify that that should be part of our demographic diversity question as, in terms of um, when we get to life experiences, thinking about folks who are homeowners, renters, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. that, that I think is part of and should be specified. If, if that's important, I think we should specify it as part of the demographic diversity element. Um, I think my, my thought around the geographic diversity 
and I know other committees have wrestled with this and I want to see if maybe, I guess, Pat, if you think back to your time on CRC, if CRC has discussed this before, but would it be better to say representation from multiple districts or um, representation or something like that to get it? We don't want, you know, only, I'll throw my own district here, you know, only people from district five because we experience this differently maybe. Mm -hmm. um, that's my question. Athena? I was just gonna suggest you add the word district. So district residency, that was, so it's clear just. I always feel really validated when Athena agrees with me. Okay. Um, so oh, should we say representative of all town districts? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Again, this is an ideal. This is not a guarantee. Right. You really? And you wanted, I thought, to include, uh, in terms of economic, distinction between renter and homeowner. And I think that is also something that we would like to see, correct? Yes. So Racial, how, economic, do, do housing, diversity. Category? Yeah. Why not simply say renters and owners? Yeah. Homeowners. It's a very real split in this town, so. Because I don't, because I agree that it's a big split in this town, and I also think that there are other lines that are bigger. Um, yeah. Or is it life experiences, skills, ages, living situations, and occupations? A little too vague, I think. Too vague, okay. I think, yeah. It, yeah, no, I see what you're saying. Um, demographic diversity, including renters and homeowners. Yeah, that list is getting long, but I I see. The, yeah, uh, that's that's where I'm. Something, yeah. yeah. And then to put like renters and homeowners next to racial, economic, right, and gender exactly. diversity right, feels like right. it's they're work. really different scales. Yeah, yeah. So it may be a separate entry: um, <laughs> demographic diversity, and take out economic, and then put it um, under um, economic diversity, including. Homeowners and renters. Could you take? I would agree out? with you, except. I um, raise your level, hands, please. Yeah. And and that is economic diversity. I also don't think that in this town, economic diversity dictates renter or non-renter at this right. point. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Pat, mm -hmm. I'm wondering if it, if it couldn't be shifted to representative all, of all town districts, and and renters and homeowners or or homeowners, renters, homeowners, business owners. I don't know. Can't we just say housing diversity? I'm not sure people is that understand not... what, that, what that means. Okay. So you know, I think plex, maybe just, plex, if this is a plex. priority, <laughs> yeah. I think if this is a priority, we should say um, a mix of homeowners and renters. I think we, I don't think we can shoehorn it into another category at this point. Let me George, thank you. You're welcome. I just wanted to do that. <laughs> I just wanted to raise my hand and have you recognize me. That's all. Um, no. <laughs> what about students? Mm -hmm. I, I say that with great trepidation, but what what about students? Why Six trepidation? Because we've had an experience, I don't want to get into too many details, but uh, in, under my time when I was at this uh, years ago, we created the dist redistricting uh, commission, but very much like this. And we worked hard to get students involved in it and it would, did not work. Um, on the other hand, that's a whole different matter. This is just a question about, um, do we want to hear from students? And I don't really know. Uh, the charter is not something that they really you know, uh, pay much attention to or have much interest in. Um, maybe we just leave it, leave it quiet. I don't know. Um, George, I'm, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Thank you. I'm done. Um, I also want us to remember we have this phrase in here, which is could mean a variety of things. Life experiences right. could mean a variety of things. Good. Pat? Good. I'm sitting here going like, what? I'm sitting here wrestling with my own values in the sense that we're talking about um, working on the charter. Does it matter? Um, 
if you're a homeowner or a renter, or a student or a non-student, uh, in terms of what, where in the charter are you affected that you wouldn't mm -hmm. necessarily want to be involved? Right. So I'm I'm I don't think it's horrible to have those things there, but I'm I'm feeling like I'm starting to feel like we're trying to cover every base and what is it we're really looking for. So sorry, but Lynn. No. No apology. Lynn? I'm not sure I feel we should put this in, but should they be a registered voter in Amherst? Um don't we have that as a blank is that a blanket requirement for committee service? I can't what does it say in the charter, George? Oh, yeah. You've been studying? Um, I think that's a good question. Lynn, I think that's a valid question. Uh, Athena? You don't have to be a registered voter to serve on a border committee. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, that's right, because we have people under 18. Um, fair. Thank you. Uh, Lynn, I don't know that necessarily that should be put in there for exactly the reason I just said. <laughs> Actually, yeah, I'm fine with um, it. With not, I wanted to just raise it. It's a good question. My point that I wanted to raise was I think that Pat is. I agree with Pat in some senses and disagree with others. I think that I could go through the charter and and and, and tie that line back to all sorts of <laughs> um all sorts of things. But I do think that this phrase of life experiences, life experiences also could include housing. It could include student status. I think that what we're trying to get with life experiences is covering this. Right. Um, but I think that we pull out some other things because they are differentiators to Pat's point in how someone experiences or would work in this committee. Um, but I actually would argue that we don't need this specifically in here because I think it's covered under life experiences. I um, agree. Okay, any objections to me taking this out as a separate line? Okay, all right, it's 9.08. Here's our list as we're as we're going. I will put them in alphabetical order. They will they are not currently. What I'd like to do before we wrap this conversation up is add in that sentence um, that we had discussed about this being a guidance for the the broad committee membership, not individual committee members. Um, I'm just going to try to type something out as I think about it. Items below are not intended to be requirements for each committee member, member, and are, oh my God, typing when people are watching me is my biggest fear, are uh, instead uh, intended to serve as guiding recommendations for the committee as a whole. This is terrible. So yeah, basically we're saying this Where do I not, go from here? Yeah, it's not a, Well, it's kind of like what Lynn has been saying, a mix, so that we have a mix of people and experiences. <laughs> I feel like I just take this bullet, mix of perspectives. And, no, we're going to have to work uh, this sentence better, yeah. Yeah, and this is, no, right. this we is rough. Let's get it out there and we'll just go. Through. I needed to put something down so we could edit it. Lynn. All right. Yeah, this has been stated a whole lot better in some other place and i'm trying to remember exactly where I, I it was <laughs> uh something like um oh god it might have been when we the were doing the, that just happened it might have been the, the leading sentence we used for the selection guidance for the um um districting advisory committee right and so All we, right. we should someone... do a little homework yeah a little homework let me see if i can this. quickly yeah. find that okay, okay. All right. I'm going to pause sharing for a second because I want to just look back at um, the um, stop share, don't end the meeting. Oh my God, that would have been a disaster. Okay, so um, what I'd like to do for a second, while Lynn is looking up that language, we're going to come back to this in a moment. Um, I wanted to, with an eye for, for the agenda here, um, talk about our timeline with this. We are not finding the pool sufficient today. Uh, unfortunately, that means that we are likely gonna have to add some meetings in in order to get this committee seated so that they have a year to do their work because they are time bound. 
um, and they have to submit a final report, which is the final of three, not the first of three, the final of three by April 1st, 2025. So they have to um, get an initial report, a pre preliminary report and a final report by April 1st, 2025. So that is why this push is here. And I wanna talk about, I've, I've mapped out some possible dates for us to add. Um, and I wanna talk about them at this point, George. No, okay, we'll come back. Wait, no, come back to you. Come back. Okay, you're back. Um, so the, I gotta look at my little map here where I talked about it, but we had talked about, or Athena and I had talked about the necessity of possibly adding meetings on, and the three dates that we can add them on are the 29th of February, which is next week. Um, that is not a GOL typical meeting week. The 11th of March, which is a Monday, but it's a non-council Monday. And the 14th of March, which is a non-GOL Thursday. Ideally, we'd be conducting interviews on these days, but because we haven't determined the applicant pool sufficient, we can't set an interview date yet. Um, I am going to say that I think we're going to need a meeting on the 29th to hopefully to get this pool sufficient. Do folks feel like that's long enough? Lynn? I don't, I mean, that means that somehow in the next five days, we wrestle up more applications. Mm -hmm. I, I, if we, yeah, you know, we're going to do I, anything, I see. we would use it for, did I just commit to another meeting that day? Shit, hold on. The initial thought for what it's worth, the initial thought for that meeting was that we would be voting on the selection guidance and developing the interview questions. Um, if we weren't able to do it tonight, the thought was that we'd have to do it next yeah. week. That, that's because, the that the town is doing their national day for truth and reconciliation. Okay. And I. Okay. Um, all right. So let me revisit. Um, maybe Athena and I can connect at some point in the next couple of days to revisit this and I can do this by email, but we're going to have to add some meetings in if we want to get this group seated. Pat? I have a quick question. Are we talking about the 7.30 to 9.30 time or are we also talking about 6.30 to 8.30? Thank you for that question. It, the March dates, we could move earlier because we would be meeting, we could meet at six, the normal council time. Wait, no, 6.30. When do we meet for council? 6.30. 6.30. We could meet at 6.30, sorry. Um, and Athena said that she's able to do an earlier time on that Thursday as well because it's her spring break. And so the poor woman is going to spend her spring break with us. Um, is, this is this which day? You're not raising that your hand, Lenny. <laughs> uh, the, uh, that would be the, the 14th, 14th, George. Is 14th? Mm hmm Yeah. Are folks available on those two dates? I, I won't, I'm not going to schedule the meeting right now, but are folks available on the 11th and the 14th at 6 March 11th is my 78th birthday. Happy birthday. We will not be, we will not be having Pat at that meeting. I will not allow Pat to be at that meeting. I will not be at that meeting, but Good. thank you. Happy birthday. Thank you. Lynn? I actually will not be available. On the 11th? Okay. No Pat, no Lynn. All right. So there is a oh, quorum boy. if the th if you and Freca can do it and George. And George. Okay, uh, I'm going to yeah. need to regroup. Oh, this poor committee. Okay. Um, I think I'm going to need to regroup with Athena because we're I need to recreate this timeline. Um, because initially that the idea I had in my head was it would be nice to be able to do interviews on those days. And obviously that's not going to happen. Um, Lynn? Can I just point out that when we develop this charge, we have to appoint the committee in the year 2024. They are supposed to report back within a year. It is highly desirable that they do report back within a year so that they report back to this council who's will be engaged okay. in this discussion because the council ultimately makes a lot of the decisions based on recommendations. But if we slip for a month or two, it's not going to be the end of the world. Right. I have a question. 
can we modify the charge if we need to or wait can we yeah. grant them an extension if we need to extensions are allowed yes yes we can i think right. i asked athena that same question last yeah. week so sorry that i needed to just ask it again okay i'm not gonna then pan i will not panic i will don't, restrain don't panic. my panic do not panic um and i won't cram four more meetings on you this month but good i <laughs> i think that it doesn't sound we will not meet on the 29th because there's a town event that's very important on that night we will be meeting again on the 7th for a regularly scheduled meeting at that time i will have an updated plan and hopefully by that time um we will have uh, a broader pool my, my big deep ask is canvas outside the grocery store email everyone you know email everyone's parents that you know i everyone mm -hmm. please um we need this pool to be broadened um mm -hmm. for for charter commission and we're just it's it's not moving um we haven't gotten new calves for it so we need to everybody's got to put some real time into that um in the coming weeks we have a robust list of draft brainstorm interview questions once we have that is pretty clearly outlined, I think, in the in the appointing process that once we've approved the selection guidance, then we can start moving on the questions. Um, and once we've set an interview date, but we can't set it all, it dominoes, right? We can't set an interview date until we've established the pool to be sufficient and we can't do the interview questions until we've set the interview date. So at that point, we'll have some future decisions to make, such as how many questions do we want to see based on how many applicants we have? Do we need to split it up over two nights, one night, one day, two days, however we want to do that? So bear bear in mind um, those questions as you're thinking about um, the next path forward. You don't need to come with an answer, but know that those are the questions that we'll be posing is how many um, how long do we want these interviews to take and how do we want to go about that? Because that will determine the number of questions and the amount of time that we give. We made good progress, um, even though we haven't buttoned anything up on this. Our folks, any questions on this, on the Charter Review Committee process? We have tentative selection guidance that is not voted on, nor is it final, but we have tentative selection guidance. I will put it back in our packet for the next meeting, updated so that we can review it again. All right, seeing no questions. Yeah, George. You're muted, George. And then I want to come back to see if Lynn, if you were able to find that. Um, Sorry, I didn't want if to not, follow If not, I'll look for it later, if that's fine. We you were muted, with... so you did not talk over me. <laughs> yeah, we want to um, come up with a sentence uh, introducing yes. the selection guidance. And Lynn has made a suggestion. It might be in the DAB uh, selection guidance. I'll look as well. Um, thank but you. We'll, we'll, get, we'll work on that. Okay, thank you. Um, if you find it, please, please send it my way. And I'm happy to work that in for the next packet as well. Okay. Um, okay, are we ready to move past this agenda item then for now? Okay, thank you everybody. That was good, good brain power, good thinking. Very proud of you all. Appreciate everyone's wisdom on this. Um, we've got a set of minutes, I believe, um, adoption of the February 8th meeting minutes. Um, so I'm going to move the council approve the minutes of February 8th, 2024. Is there a second, George? A second. My second. Thank you. Um, and I'm going to call the vote. Uh, George, how do you vote? Aye. Uh, Pat? Aye. Lynn? Aye. And I am an aye as well. So it passes four in favor, zero opposed, one absent. Um, all right, folks. So coming up, I don't have any unanticipated items um, under the 24 hour rule. Coming up, just a, a peak of coming attractions. Um, we will be revisiting the Charter Commission and the Finance Committee at the next meeting. Um, hopefully we've got robust and thrilling pools for both. Um, and that's really the plan. We also, uh, on the horizon, we have a report due back to the council by April 30th regarding the town manager evaluation process. I will be introducing my outline of the how we're going to tackle that at the next meeting. Um, unless, I feel like I should caveat this before Athena's like, don't promise things that are going to be on the agenda um, unless something changes and I don't think we will have time but we do have a report due on April 30th regarding the town manager evaluation George you're muted but I see your hand is up I'm wondering about a work plan um, at some point uh, just giving us a sense over the next couple of months what are some without getting too specific what are some of the things that we um, 
plan to be working on or will be working on or, or could be working on. Um, right now, I feel like my vision is very, um, very short. And I'm wondering what things look like mm -hmm. a couple months down the road to the degree that we can do that. Yeah. Is that possible? Yeah, I have a work plan that's very specific. And so because it's so specific, I haven't, it's not something that I've shared with the committee. It's more just me keeping my brain straight on what's going on the agenda. So why don't I take a look at it and try to zoom it out that. a bit and share it with um, us and I'll, and then, and I'll see. And yep. we can look at it and talk about it. Yep. And, yeah. Because thank you. Yeah, I, I think that's fine. I'll I'll confirm with Athena what makes sense in terms because yeah. what we don't my understanding is that what we don't want to do is um promise something will be coming up in front of a committee on a certain date and then it doesn't because things get pushed. Um but I think if I can zoom it out a bit, we can definitely um I can I, I think we can get that for the next meeting. Thank you, Anna. Thank you. Um anything else from folks before we for the good of the order before we um depart. I was informed today that the meetings technically go until 9.30 and not 9. Um, I had been really pushing for that 9, but uh, today we needed the full two hours. So um, any anything else before we, we adjourn for the day? No? Oh, George, you unmuted. You're going to say something wise for us? Okay. Thank you all very, very much for your engagement and participation. Happy Thursday. I will see you all on the 7th. Take care. Thank Bye. you. Good night.